If you want to learn more about Juno Space and all the awesome things it can do, sign up for our Juno Space Essentials course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for JSE in the keyword search box. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the changing Juno Space Password Settings Learning Byte. Alright, so let's discuss what are some of the default password settings. Now these are the password settings that are global password settings. So these apply to all users that need to log into Juno Space. And some of those default password settings are noted on the slides, such as the minimum number of characters, which is set to six. Also the number of previous passwords that can't be reused, that's set to six. The number of unsuccessful attempts before lockout, set to four. The time interval for lockout in hours, set to 12 hours, so half a day. Time interval for password expiry in months is set to 3, and the time interval for password expiry notification in months is set to 1. Now that last bit, that means that if you change your password in Juno Space, it'll expire in 3 months. However, in 2 months, you'll get a notification saying, hey, you need to change your password. It's expiring soon. And if you don't change your password, when that 3 months comes up, your password will expire and you'll have to change it before you can log into the device. Then there are some advanced settings. In these advanced settings, it allows you to turn on or off certain features or parameters, such as at least one lowercase character, at least one number that's not in the last position, at least one special character that's not in the last position, as well as other parameters. So here is our example. Uh, we have one Juno Space device. No managed devices for, that we are going to be discussing in this learning byte. And then we want to uh, set some password uh, settings, uh, things like that, that will affect the uh, user super. And basically we're going to use the super user to test these restrictions. And first we want to be able to set the password for super to LAB at 123, lowercase l, uppercase a, lowercase b. So we're going to have to do a few things to make sure that works out that way. And then we want to ensure that the following passwords that you see on the slide aren't usable for the super user. Those are super123, super is lowercase, 123repus, all lowercase, and notice that repus is just super backwards, lab123 at, all lowercase for lab, lab at 123, all lowercase for lab, and then lab at 123 uppercase for lab. And then on top of that, we want to disable the user account lockout feature. Now, you may or may not want to do that for a production environment, for, but for a lab or training environment, this is very useful. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the Juno Space web GUI. All right, here is the web GUI. Let's go ahead and log in. This is just a fresh Juno Space install. We're logging in with the super user, the default password of Juniper123, all lowercase. And then you'll see the first thing we're presented with is it wants us to enter a new password. That's par for the course. This is expected. So we're going to change this to uh, 123Juniper just to get going. And when that happens, we get logged out. That's pretty standard, too. OK, so the first thing you want to ask yourself is, where do I change these global default settings? And you might think, well, what about role-based access control? That's, that sounds pretty likely to change those settings. OK, so let's go to user accounts. Let's see what we have here. We do have a super user. Let's edit this guy. Let's modify the user. And well, not terribly helpful. We just have we can change the password. We can set a temporary password, things like that. Let's let's click next. 
Uh, here we're just, uh, these are basically permissions, and we can uh, assign on the next slide uh, domains. So, uh, so that's uh, not what we're looking for. So the real place to actually do this is under the administration workspace. Go to the applications workspace. Here we can modify the network management platform application. That is the base application for space. That's what you log into to uh, begin with. So now that we're modifying the application, the network management platform application, we can go to the password workspace. And within here we have the different parameters we discussed in the uh, the slides and for example we have the minimum number of characters filled and the, the great thing here is you can change this to something that's not allowed and it's going to give you a warning you know for example it says that we need to set this to a, at least a minimum of six for the minimum number of characters so we'll change that to six that's okay that doesn't affect our case study at all and then the other part of the example is we wanted to disable that lockout feature. And there's two different fields here that we want to disable. The first one is the number of unsuccessful attempts before lockout. If we change that to zero, that disables it. And then we want to change the time interval for lockout in hours. We're going to set that to zero. Technically, setting the number of unsuccessful attempts before lockout to zero, disabling it should do it for us, but we are going to disable both of those features by setting them to zero. And then next, we want to click the Save button here. This allows us to save the information on the page. And then we can click the View Configure link for the advanced settings. So here are the advanced settings here is where we can set the restrictions to restrict those specific types of passwords that we do not want to use the first type of password that we specified in the slides was super all lowercase one two three to restrict that we can leave the not repeat of the user ID checkbox since it has the word super in it then the next password we want to restrict is the one two three repus which is basically super backwards all lowercase so one, two, three, super backwards. And the last option, not reverse of the user ID, having that checked restricts that as well. Then the next that we want to restrict is lab one, two, three, at. And lab is all lowercase. So what can we do there? We can select the at least one special character not in the last position checkbox. And then the next option, lab, lowercase, at 123, what can we do there? Well, you might think, well, the at least one number not in the last position will work, and that will. However, we have that one password we want to set it to that has a number in the last position, and we'll talk about that password here in a minute. Well, that password is lab, lowercase l, uppercase a, lowercase b, at 123. So that's not going to work for that. So we want to use the at least one uppercase character checkbox. And then the last password we wanted to restrict was the LAB or lab all uppercase at 123. And so we can handle that by making sure the at least one lowercase character parameter is checked. And it is by default. Okay, so let's actually talk about the password we want to set it to which is lab lowercase l uppercase a lowercase b at one two three the only thing that will not allow us to set that password right now in this advanced settings workspace is the at least one number not in the last position checkbox so we want to uncheck that and then save and then modify that that that'll save all the settings for us take us out so then we need to go to the user settings gear icon in the top or right hand corner this allows us to change our password. We'll enter the old password of 123Juniper. We'll try the passwords that are restricted first. Let's try super123, all lowercase. S-U-P-E-R-123. S-U-P-E-R-123. All right, so it doesn't let us do this for a few different reasons. And it tells us we have to have at least one uppercase character we must have at least one non-alphanumeric character and this last one must not repeat the login ID cool so let's try the next one one two three R E P U S all lowercase 
one, two, three, R, E, P, U, S, all lowercase. Okay, let's us know. It's not going to work. We need one uppercase character, one non alphanumeric character, and this was a reverse of the login ID. Great. So let's try that again. So let's try it with lab123 with the at sign. So that's lab123 at all lowercase. Click OK. And it lets us know we need at least one uppercase character. And it must not contain a special character as the last character. Awesome. OK, so let's try lab at 123, all lowercase. LAB at 123. Again, all lowercase. Let's just know we need to have at least one uppercase character. Okay, let's try LAB at 123, all uppercase for lab. LAB at 123. Again, all uppercase for lab. Click OK. Let's us know hey, you need at least one lowercase character. And that's the great thing, it's going to tell you what's wrong with your password. You're not going to be in the dark. Okay, so let's try the password we do want to use. Lowercase l, uppercase a, lowercase b, at 123. Lowercase l, uppercase a, lowercase b, at 123. And it works. Awesome. We get logged out as we should. Let's try to log back in now with our password lowercase l, uppercase a, lowercase b, at one, two, three. And great, we are able to log in. That's exactly what we want. That brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed Juno Space password settings, and then we demonstrated how to change and verify those password settings. So, as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.